Hello Year 12 Chemists, welcome to TP's Chemistry Cuts. In this clip you'll be shown how to carry out a titration, starting with cleaning the equipment, then carrying out a rough measurement and finally getting three concordant and accurate results. Right then, so I'm going to take you through a titration and before we do that I'm going to show you the equipment you're going to be using and then some of the hints and tips about start setting it up before we actually do the titration. Okay? So, we get two stop beakers to keep your acids and bases in and you can fill these up. Before you do anything, you need to make sure you don't get them mixed up because acids and bases are both colourless uh, solutions. So I just think of the all blacks and just put A and B on a piece of paper underneath acid and base. Okay, and have your things ready. You get some indicator, phenol failing for this particular reaction, and then a pipette. And the pipette, as we've seen before, is there to measure a very accurate volume, in this case 25 mils, okay, which we put into a conical flask. Okay. The, you get a wash bottle, for washing everything out, and we'll come to that in a minute, and you get a burette, and the burette is there for delivering in a controlled way a, an easily measured but accurate volume to whatever in the flask, so that the reaction can go as you're adding it, and you can monitor it as you're going along. Now, the maxim that cleanliness is next to godliness is really important in this. When you get all this equipment, you should not assume it's nice and clean. Any form of uh, dirt or uh, bits sticking on the side of your flask is a potential contaminant, and that will affect your results. And what we're doing here is we're trying to get things as accurate as possible. So if you've got contaminants in there, it's just going to completely make the whole thing <coughs> meaningless. So it's really important, before you start doing anything, that you make sure the equipment you're going to use is clean. Now, with these, okay, each one you need to, first of all, wash them out with a bit of water just to make sure that uh, they're nice and clean. Anything that's inside is going to be washed down. You can do that a couple of times. Okay. Now, the problem now is you've got water in there and that's going to dilute whatever you put in there. So what I would recommend is that you put a small amount of the stock solution in there, okay, give it a good rinse around, and don't do what I'm doing and put it down the sink, you'll be given an ice cream tub and you pour it into the ice cream tub. Okay, so that's that one. You only need to do that once, okay? Now that was this one, wasn't it? And this one. Okay, it's really important you get these right. So that's my acid, okay, and I'm going to fill that up with some acid stock solution. Then I'm going to clean my other one, my other beaker, very quickly with water, rinse it round, make sure you've got anything that's on the inside of that, rinse down to the bottom, a couple of times maybe, okay? So say you only do this once at the beginning, and then I'm going to put a small amount of base in there, Rinse it round. And then I can put my stock solution. Okay? Now you only need to do that once for that one as well. Okay? Once it's done, you start. Okay. Now, having done that, we now have to move on to the burette. Now, as a uh, an easy way to remember this just think the base always goes in the burette. Okay? Base in burette. So we're going to wash it out first of all, before you start anything of course, make sure the tap's closed. Wash it out with water to make sure it's... I could have picked a better one in this, couldn't I? Okay, so give this a good rinse around with the water. And don't forget the bit at the bottom here, okay? And then 
all that out. Now the problem, of course, is now we have water in there, so we need to put some base in there. And of course, at this point, you realise it's a really good idea that you labelled each one correctly, because that's the base. Okay. And I can put a small amount in there, making sure that my tap's closed. Give it a good... And again, don't forget the bit that's past the tap. Okay. And then, so that's all done. You only do that once at the beginning of the titration. Okay. Now I'm going to fill that up with base. It's probably <coughs> easier to do it like this before you mount it. A lot of people put it onto the clamp stand and then uh, stand up on chairs and things. I think it's a lot easier to do this. <coughs> It's not important that you get this to zero. You don't need to do it to zero, okay? Because you're going to look at a difference in two volumes. So, so long as you've measured the correct, uh, the first volume correctly, then it doesn't really matter that it's not quite on zero, okay? So that's close to zero. It's not exactly zero. And I'll run down some to make sure that there are no bubbles in this section of the burette. Okay? So if you don't allow for that, you're going to get an, uh, uh, an error in your measurement. Once we're happy with that, then I can clamp it up. So we're almost there. Now, the next thing is I'm going to clean the pipette. Okay? I'm going to need You'll probably get stock beakers this size, because when there's 20 odd uh, people in the class, and each of you's got a large beaker like that, the acid and base don't last very long, so you tend to be uh, given just the minimum, okay? Then much more. So I'm going to wash that, and then this is going to be using some acid, so I'm going to quickly rinse that out with acid. Now really, you should wash this with water first. But I'm going to cut corners here and make this as quick as possible so you can get practicing. So I'm just going to put some acid in there now. Okay? And we're just going to rinse this a couple of times. Again, like this, you only have to do this once. Okay? So, it's just a case of let's the wrong one, isn't it? This is a 20 mil one. Okay, so really, as you're doing that, that's going all over the place. But just put a small amount of acid in and wash it out. Now that's ready for use. Okay, right. The last thing is this you only ever wash this out with water. Okay, the flask that you're doing the reaction in. It doesn't matter if there's water in there because that's not going to affect the amounts of reactants. Okay? So you just use as much water as you like. Get it nice and make sure it's nice and clean. Okay? Now the thing with this is you need to wash this after every single titration with plenty of water, okay, so that's nice and clean. <coughs> it's easier to see a reaction and a change in colour if you've got white underneath, okay, so what I'm going to do is turn this sideways. So this goes underneath, and the best place to put the burette is so the tip of the burette is just about there, okay? It means that you're delivering your volume, it needs to go straight into the thing. If you have it up here, it can splash anywhere, if you go too far down, it's very difficult to not break the end. Okay? So that's our first one. Now, the next thing is, having got this all set up, I need to take my initial measurement. 
And this is the first really handy tip. If you want to take a measurement, first of all, check that everything's exactly upright. It's not tilted. The other thing is you've got to allow for parallax. If you're looking at an angle, then you're going to get a mismeasurement. Okay? So you need to be in level, the level with the actual uh, meniscus of the uh, burette. Okay? So you need to be standing on something like this, particularly if you're one of the more uh, longitudinally challenged people in the class. How about that, Trevor, for uh, a bit of political correctness? Put the white paper behind it, okay? And you'll see the uh, meniscus stands out. Now, even though it stands out, I need my glasses to be able to see this, so I'll quickly do this. Now, we'll look, about, look at how we take measurements of burettes in a while. But I'm going to take this one quickly. And it is. So, first measurement is 1.60 feet. Next thing we need to do is to put our volume of acid in the uh, flask. Make sure it's away from there. Do this uh, with plenty of space. Okay. Remember, if you're using one of these, squeeze it first, then put it on, holding it there, and then you can suck up the volume. Remember, the graduated line must be in line with the bottom of the meniscus. If you shoot past it, which I'm bound to do because this is the first time I've done this this year, then That's it. It's a stressful thing doing a titration sometimes. Now, do not blow it in. Be patient. It takes time to run down. And you'll notice that when it has run down, there's a little bit left at the bottom. What you do is you touch the surface of the uh, liquid in the flask, and it will draw down some of that volume but it won't draw it all down. There's a little bit left. That is not part of the 25 or 20 mils in this case uh, volume. So do not make, sort of make sure of things by blowing that in. That means you've got too much. Just draw it down by touching the surface of the, okay? So we're now ready to do the titration. So what you need to do is two drops. You don't need any more than a couple of drops, okay? That is all you need. Now, it's at this point you'll know if you've got the acids and bases the wrong way around, because if it goes purple, you have got them wrong. Okay? So now we're ready to start the titration. Now, the first one you do is just there to get a very rough approximation of the volume needed to get to the end point of the reaction. So don't mess about. Don't think, oh, well, I want to get all of my measurements exactly right and concordant, so I'm going to take, nice, take this nice and slow. Don't. Basically, just start the thing running. You can see a little bit of a pink bit in the middle. Now, what you do is you just keep swirling it, keep swirling it. And this is nice and quick. And the moment the pink colour stays, that's giving you in a very rough volume. But it gives you some idea of what you're aiming for. I'll stop it and just quickly. We're getting very close. Okay, and that's it. You see how quick that was? About half a minute at the most. But now we've got an approximate volume, a sort of a ballpark mm -hmm. volume that we know we can aim for. Now we can stop short of that in the next titration and get close to it by doing it very, very slowly. Because that's what you've got to do. You've got to get to the point where it changes to pink with just one drop 
You've got to be that close. Otherwise, you won't be in the range for getting excellence. Is that clear? So it's got to be very carefully done. It's, oh, oh I'll get it approximate and just make up three volumes. Don't do that because you'll probably get it wrong. So I'm going to read the volume from there. What did I do with my glasses? <coughs> and that is 19.65. And now you can see why we've done the table this way round. Because it's a simple like the subtraction, so that's 18.05. Now, you need to make sure you are not going to use that as part of your uh, value later on, because that's rough. So write it, rough. It's because it goes downwards. Good question. So this is 1 mil, and this is 19, so it's going downwards. So you can subtract them away. So you put the final volume at the top, and the initial volume underneath it, and you can just subtract them away. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so that's our initial rough one. Now, I've still got another 30 mils in here, so do I need to fill this up before I start the second titration? Do I? No. No, in fact, it's to my advantage not to. Because all I need to do now is to take that value and put it here. Because that's my starting point for the next titration. And I know that if I add 18 onto there, so I get to about 37.5, that's going to be where it is. So I'm going to go to 36.5 very quickly, stop it, and then make sure it hasn't changed colour and then drop by drop. So that's why we do the rough one. It's because we can quickly add a large volume now because we know exactly, well, no, we know approximately when it's going to change colour and we can do that for every single one as we're going along now. It saves a lot of time. Right, so the next thing is I need to get rid of this. Okay. Now, I'm going to actually use the tap because we need to be moving on. Okay, but you should be using a squeezy bottle with water in and you rinse it plenty of times, put the uh, mixture into the sink until you're very, you're really happy that this is now clean, okay? Right, go back to my uh, pipette, and I'm going to put another one, 25 or 20 mils in, okay? So you squeeze this first, put it on the top. Wait for it, boys. <laughs> Patience is a virtue. Find it where you can. Seldom in a woman, never in a man. <coughs> and then once it's gone through, just touch the surface of the liquid until it draws down as much as it's going to draw, and then that's it. Okay, two drops of indicator. Oh, that was a squirt. Never mind. Okay. And then we can add 18 onto there, that's 37 and a half, so we go to 36 and a half, okay. And this is where you've got to hold your nerve, okay. Because you're looking at it and you think, there's no way that pink colour is going to disappear. And of course, provided it doesn't go past 36 and a half. Okay, and this is quite a derby, isn't it? Is that colour going to disappear when I swirl it? Incredible, isn't it? Okay, now it's at this point that you really have to show some patience. Okay, so it's a case of literally drop by drop. So I'll save my back by sitting down. So it's going in drop by drop. 
Now, if you're going to be really precise about this, bits of acid and so on may have splashed up around the sites. So every so often, it may be a good idea just to wash it down. Okay? And then we can go back and... And so... Now, if it's a really cold day, sometimes it's a good idea just to wait a very short time, maybe up to about 10 seconds, because you'll see that the colour faded. Okay? However, you don't leave it too long, because otherwise you'd be there all day. Okay? So that is really close to the end point. It's literally one or maybe two drops away. So this is where you've got to hold your nerve. It's always the last drop where you suddenly sit and the whole lot goes to custard. So patience, patience, okay? Now I've got half a drop there, so I'm going to wash it off. Okay? Now normally, you, you could see how close it was last time. It took a while to fade away. This is that extra drop is taking you past it. But that's basically what you should be aiming for, or slightly lighter. It should be just pink. If it's really, really intense pink, it means you've gone too far past. Okay, so you've got to literally get it on the drop. Now we need to just take the uh, measurement. Again, piece of white paper. Put your glasses on if you're like me. I'm half blind. And... That one is 37.2. Yeah. Okay, so we do one more, see if we can get it to be close. And then, in the rest of the lesson, perhaps, no, we can't do any more. Okay, so make sure your, fla your flask is nice and clean. Okay, we need to bring it over here, do another 25 mils. From the acid... Touch the surface. Okay, get a little bit left, but that doesn't matter, we've allowed for that. Now, we need about 17 and a half, and I've got 37. It only goes down to 15, so I don't have enough in there to do a full titration. So what at this point you need to do is to fill this up. Okay? And using the right one because you've labelled it as base. You don't have to put it all the way up and mess around getting zero, get it close enough to zero so you can be sure you get a couple of titrations. And there you go. Okay. Do not leave this in here because sometimes it traps a bit of liquid which slowly seeps down and you'll get a wrong reading. Okay. So, we've done this. Now, I just need a couple of drops of indicator. Okay. Before I start, of course, I need to take my 
measurement, my initial measurement, which is, we said, no point, my glasses on, it's hard being blind. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run that down slightly because it's very close to zero. And I'd rather it be off zero. So we're going to be about 17 and a half, so that would be 18.3 or so. So if we go to 17.3 and then do it drip by drip. Okay, so 17.3. So now we can make sure that we've got everything off the sides washed down, maybe the tip of the burette washed down, and then we can add drip by drip until we get to the final one. Right, we're getting very close. So let's quickly wash down everything, make sure we've got everything in the flask. Try again. That's probably going to be the next drip or beyond that. And that's to the drip. Okay. Give it a few seconds, maybe five or so seconds, and I'd say that's actually just there. It's just not perking anymore. Okay, so let's just wash down the tip of the bureau. There's a bit hanging off. You see how sensitive it's, the indicator is? And that's literally to the half drop. Okay? That's what you're aiming for. It's, if it's the slightest tinge of pink, you're there. Don't add an extra drip. Okay? So let's read that. And hopefully, fingers crossed, so that is 18.5. Somebody do the subtraction for me, please. That's 17.75, isn't it? Okay. Now, having done that, those are only just within range. Do so I need to do another one, which hopefully would fall in between? Do you want me to do another one? Yes. How do you know what the range for excellence is you've got to get three within a range of 0.2 of a mil. And your average has to be within 0.2 of my average, because I'm actually going to be doing the titration as well at the same time as you. If we get um, like a range that's fully up, we just do another one. Yeah, you just you've got you've got a double lesson to do this. So if you're not getting concordancy, you can keep going until you do. If you do get concordancy, I would recommend you stop. Don't do extra ones. Okay. Okay. So we'll quickly wash this one out. So once again, let's do another. This is 
Okay, so once again, touch the surface of the liquid in the flask. Two drips of indicator, and you're ready to go. And of course, provided you've not got a leaking burette, then you've already got your the initial measurements, so you don't have to do it again. So uh, we've got 18.5. Uh, our initial measurement. We know it's going to be somewhere like about huh? 17 and a half or so. Okay, so that would be uh, 36.25. Let's go to 35.25. Okay, so let that go. Okay, and you see how much time this is saving by just because you do a rough one initially. You might think it's going to waste a lot of time doing the rough one, but maybe I should uh, be a bit more careful. <laughs> but it saves so much time later on, it's worth doing it like that. Okay? Yes, I'll come to you in just a second. Yes, Chris? Did you miss the point? Did you just, did you just start? Just do it again. No, you have to just start all over again. Okay? So once again, I'm getting close to it. So before you start adding drip by drip, Make sure you wash everything down into the flask. Okay. And then you can start drip by drip. I'm not going to look at the volume until I've got to the end point. Focus entirely on the colour change. Okay. Don't worry about what the volume is until you've finished. Okay, so we're getting very close again now. Uh, so literally within a few drips now. So washing it down into the solution, and then let's see what happens. Okay, give it a few seconds. Just gone colours. I would say literally the next drip. Yeah. Um, how do you do the experiments well? Does that affect every class? Or, uh, so then the teacher's like average results or something like that? Yeah. Well, I'll talk to that in a minute. Okay. Now, so that's it for that one. Uh, so quickly take the measurements, which is. Where's my glasses? Yeah. 36.25. No, like four. 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 This one is not concordant. It's not within a 0.2 range between the maximum and minimum, so I'm not going to use that. These, however, are. So the maximum is this one, the minimum's that. All three are in that range. So tip them. Okay. Can somebody quickly calculate the average? Now, what we call that volume is a titer. Okay. Which is equal to 17.62. Okay. Now, 